I am James Alofs. I left the big city to build an off-grid homestead on 40 acres of Canadian wilderness. This area of Ontario has giant ridgelines, deep valleys, and pure rivers. Black bears, gray wolves, mountain lions, moose, and many forest spirits share the land. I started in November 2023. Starting with a modest 12 by 16 foot guest cabin, my goal is to build such a glorious homestead that I attract a magnificent wife, have 10 babies, and raise an Irish wolfhound. Welcome to Wild Homestead. This poplar I fell because there was another tree, a white spruce I was using that was uh, tangled up in it. And it allowed me to unlock that tree, but it's kind of precariously leaning against a, a young spruce and a young poplar over here. But I think I'm gonna cut these two young guys and try to get it down because this is very precarious here. And just in case it does have the length to get over to the trail. added bonus of this side quest. I think I found my non-toxic chinking material for the cabin, moss. There is a ton of moss. It's mainly under snow right now, but there is a ton of moss kind of in this glade back here.
that ladies and gentlemen i think we've got sufficient logage to do the eastern gable we will commence construction on that tomorrow and uh i got sidetracked this afternoon just the sun has just set um sidetracked this afternoon one of my neighbors uh came over who i've been meaning to meet he's quite a bit uh up river from me but an old timer and we were talking about you know this location and he gave me very interesting advice because my plan was to originally basically you know just trim kind of the small trees around this field and open it up you know so that the bugs the flying bugs i'm talking about mosquitoes and flies don't get too crazy during the summertime and i told him my plan he's like that is a very smart plan he's like but you have to cut a much bigger area he said first of all um we are out on this peninsula here so over there it starts it juts out into the river plain the furthest point is the area where i want to build my future house right overlooking the river and it kind of comes back here um and it continues over there but he said those poplar trees over there you want to punch a pocket out so you can see the sunset but also you want to have a wind corridor coming from the river valley and he said you want to punch all of this out as well because over there it drops back down to the river valley um, it's up on this peninsula he said the other thing is he's like you want to clear all of this this used to be this area to the south here where all these field grown trees are um this used to be an operating cattle farm he said he would punch it over to where the mature forest starts in the west over there and all the way up to thor's oak over there he said anywhere you see their field grown trees that's the old field you want at least three or four acres of meadow he said and you want to have it connected to the wind patterns along the river valley he said otherwise the flying insects during june july august are going to be quite uh intense indeed so um that was a real game changer for me so i think even starting tomorrow like even some of these small guys right around here i'm just going to start knocking them down if i have my chainsaw with me uh a meadow uh, with wildflowers and berry bushes uh, and grasses and the like is wonderful for biodiversity and wildlife there's actually a dearth really of meadows in this area Ladies and gentlemen, I just got back from town. I've got some horrible news. I don't know if I can keep going. This is truly traumatic. I think I'm going to be shutting down the YouTube channel, guys. I'm so sorry. Thank you for following along, but the grocery store, they were sold out of berries and cherries. They only had wild blueberries. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't. A whole week without any berries and cherries. But you know what? I got an Irish wolfhound cub coming in a few weeks. And if I'm not here, he'll perish. So I think I'm going to keep going.
I wish they all could be California girls. I haven't seen a human female in four months. <laughs>
I better cut these down. These will, uh, these were covered under snow when I originally cut them, but um, these things could totally puncture the tires on the ATV. There we go. Nice and smooth. Hello. So the reason that I boiled these components before putting it into the tree is that you don't want any bacteria. I think it's much harder from what I've read for the tree's immune system to fight bacterial infections or fungal infections if you're boring into the tree, right? So just bore in a little bit. I think I bored in about an inch and a half, boiled it to disinfect it, put some hot water in this bucket just to make sure it was kill off as much as I can. And uh, we'll come back. It's still around zero. So from what I've read is the sap will start flowing once it gets into the positives. It's going to hit plus 10 degrees Celsius today. So we'll see if we can't get some sap coming out of this guy. So I just used this chainsaw to uh, trim down this log I'm working on now for the next step on the gable. And I'm like, you know what? While I got the chainsaw out, might as well knock down these two little trees because you know, I need to open up into this meadow behind. You can see how much the difference is when you have sun hitting a spot for long periods of the day versus not. Look at this meadow here that gets a lot of direct sunlight for most of the day versus this, it's still all snowed in. There's a wall of trees separating it from direct sunlight. So I'm gonna knock these two down. I'm probably gonna leave that big guy but some of those ones along the edge over there, I'm gonna take us so and get some more sunlight in here. You even see over there, you know, in that half of the meadow over there, all snowed in. So That is a beautiful straight log. Mid-afternoon nap. We'll see you in 20 minutes. Mmm. The nice thing about a 12 by 12 roof, everything's 45 degree angles, which makes it simple.
realize, you know, Thor's red oak is right here. These trees, these small trees are blocking the sunlight for him. It's a miracle this guy's even survived in the first place. I'm just going to, I got my chainsaw right here. I'm just going to knock down these, these little spruce trees. After helping out Thor's red oak get direct sunlight, spent about 10 minutes cutting down a bunch of trees. I'm pulling around the corner here in the old uh, ATV and I look up at the sun, the setting sun, and what do I see? A perfect balsam fir, perfectly straight. Could not be any more straight. The perfect diameter, about seven inches at breast height for the, the ridge beam. This thing is perfect. I've been looking for literally like a week and I haven't been able to find something that's straight. Remember this thing needs to be 22 feet long. That is the same diameter as the two eaves beams I'm using. I think that that was Thor the Thunder God himself. I look to the setting sun right after helping Thor's red oak. And what do I find? The thing that I've been looking for for an entire week. This is interesting because this guy is dead. This is the first dead tree that I fell. So he seems to be fine. There's no rot. But uh, we're going to peel it and see if it's okay. I don't know. It doesn't look great. Going to have to use something else. To build a log cabin or not to build a log cabin? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of enormous logs or to bear arms against a sea of mountain lions and by opposing, end them.
This is the perfect ridge beam. Look how straight this thing is. This is absolutely perfect. Wildering to me that right after we cut down those trees that were blocking the sun to Thor's Red Oak, literally the, the sunset drew my eyesight in this direction to see this tree. Coincidence or the thunder god at work? And the maple syrup, ladies and gentlemen. Bucket number one. Oh. Uh, huh. Not a single drop. Hmm. <gasps> oh my god. That's not bad. Whoa! Honestly, that's like the most refreshing thing I have ever drank in my entire life. Not because only it's cool, but it's slightly sweet. Just the ever, like the slightest hint of that maple sweetness. And you can taste like it's, it feels alive. The water, the maple sap feels alive because it probably is. There's probably good bacteria in there. There's probably vitamins and minerals, right? Because this is what the tree is shooting up into its crown to become alive again and feed its, uh, you know, buds as they develop. So this is like, this is almost like, you know, breast milk for trees, essentially. Here we go, maple sap water coffee. Oh, good goodness. the last of the maple water. Look at that. I've literally drank only maple water. 
today. And uh, this is gonna be a hell of a struggle, man. This is um, one of the biggest beams I've ever done, except for the two eaves beams and to get it all the way to the top of those gables. Ooh, hey, strap yourself in. Do or do not, there is no try. Highway to the danger zone. I feel the need, the need for speed. Neighbor did give me this beam that he was using to build a cabin. He didn't end up using it. Um, I'm going to use it as backup, but there was just something I thought about it. You know, I'm like, first of all, this beam is a little, just a smidge thin, thinner than I wanted to use. I wanted to use something close to what the eaves beams are, which are like seven inches. Um, and to be honest, you know, there's something about the ridge beam. It's the most symbolic beam, I think, in the entire cabin. And uh, I think it's cool if that, that beam you did yourself. You know, you found it yourself, especially this one was revealed to us after helping Thor's Red Oak. So I believe Thor the Thunder God himself chose this beautiful, beautiful beam. Holy cow, these are cold, man. That water is cold. Whoa! Bridge beam is in. This is my first beer. It's St. Patrick's Day. This video is going live on Saturday. It's St. Patrick's Day on Sunday. To all the Irish Celts out there, happy St. Patrick's Day. I can't believe the ridge beam is up, man. Look at that. This is the... F oh, Mm. 
That is delicious. This is the first beer or any alcohol that I've had since I got here on November 4th. Even when I was back home for Christmas with my family, no beer, no wine, because I've just been terrified of, of getting sick out here. You know, and I find I'm not really a big drinker at all, but on momentous occasions such as this, you know, to be quite honest with you, I was a lot more scared about getting this ridge beam up than it actually was. The log ladder worked great, and having these steps um, to walk uh, the ridge beam up on the gables was a huge game changer. Here is to the Irish. My sister was on exchange in Dublin, Ireland for an entire year, and I went to visit her over there. It's a beautiful country. The Irish people are great. The Celtic world. Uh, Dublin, interestingly enough, there was a Gaelic, a Gael, a Celtic settlement kind of up river from where it currently is. And then the majority of the city was actually founded as a military encampment uh, during the Viking Age by Norwegian Vikings. At least that's what I remember during my city tour of Dublin. So the city of Dublin has a very rich Celtic and Viking history. Uh, fascinating place. You've got to go to Ireland if you get the chance. And to be honest, it's one of the reasons I'm getting an Irish wolfhound. April 6th, coming up fast. So um, thanks for watching, everybody. The insulation and the rafters are coming next week. I can't believe how this is coming together. Cheers. First beer in four months. And uh, on a momentous occasion, the ridge beam is up. The final log. Well, I'm glad I drank some of a beer because I just crashed my drone three quarters of the way up that tree. Let, never a dull moment, ladies and gentlemen. Now I got to go climb up this tree. What the actual hell? What? Oh my God. Absolutely wild, ladies and gentlemen. So the drone is so far up there, I basically diagnosed that if I try to climb up there, I'm gonna end up killing myself. But I need the drone. It's got all the footage from this week and I need it. And with my plan for this field, I need to knock this tree down anyways. But the danger is, is that my tent is right behind. Trial by fire test. Have my lumberjacking skills improved since I got out here, because I need to fell this tree in the opposite direction of my tent. This is totally unnecessary stress for me right now, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. I touched the back of this blade to the back of the tree. It fell right towards the ATV, baby. Holy schnickerdoodles. Did not destroy the tent, felled the tree. Where's the drone? I can freaking hear it. Oh my God, now it's in another tree. There it is. Got this chainsaw stuck. Trying to cut down this birch tree. Oh, there's the moon. There she is. I'm standing on a ladder, top of a ladder, in an absolute quagmire in the middle of this down tree with a clump of other live trees. The sun has set. I'm going to stand on the top rung of the ladder. This is not a good idea. <coughs> ah! There it is. It's on the ground. Are you kidding me? It's still in one piece. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you appreciate the drone footage this week because uh, that was a hell of a time. We'll see you next week. You never know what's going to happen on Wild Homestead.